Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. Today's subject, the Christian armed for battle. One of the ways the Christian life is discussed in the New Testament is under the concept of spiritual warfare. Satan and his wicked agents are presented as our unseen but very real enemy. He attacks believers, especially in the areas of the mind. But God has made provision for his people's protection. Paul exhorts us to take up the armor of God and to stand against the devil. Listen to Paul's exhortation recorded in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10, NIV version. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you shall or can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now there are six pieces to the armor God has given to the believer. In a future broadcast, we're going to look at each one individually. But today is an overview. Five are defensive in nature and one is both defensive and offensive. They are primarily for our use in spiritual warfare or spiritual battles waged by our enemy against us. He desires to hinder our spiritual growth, to mute our witness to Christ, and to cause us to sin. He wants us to dishonor our Lord Jesus by causing us to stumble and by causing us to doubt Christ's work in our lives, and for us. John Bunyan, in his classic tale of the Christian life, entitled Pilgrim's Progress, describes the suiting up a pilgrim by the sisters he meets at the palace beautiful. Quote, Then they fitted Christian out with the armor with which their Lord provided for the use of travelers, that they should be ready for any assaults along the way and that they should stand their ground when things were at their worst, and having done all to stand. First, the helmet and breastplate that could save his life. Then the faithful shield to fend off the fiery darts of the wicked. Then the trusty sword that could cut through anything. And finally, his feet were shod with shoes that would never wear out. Shoes that have on them gospel of peace. For he was setting out, they said, not against human foes, but against the wiles of the devil. Thus fully armed, did Christian hurry to the gate and begin his journey again. As Bunyan relates the story, since Pilgrim, also known as Christian, did not immediately face a foe and things seemed calm, he felt content. He found himself in a solitary place that was called the Valley of Humiliation. Surely, he thought, the worst was behind him, but suddenly a darkness fell across the sun, and Christian felt a sense of unease. He roused himself and saw a towering figure stalking towards him. It was the foul fiend called Apollyon. Now, the name Apollyon is closely tied to Satan or the devil. The name appears in the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse, chapter 9, verse 11. I read, They, that is, an army of demons, had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is Apollyon, that is, destroyer. Although sometimes used as a synonym for the devil, he's more likely to be a chief demon. In this verse, both his Hebrew and Greek names are given. In Hebrew, the name Abaddon means place of destruction, and the Greek title, Apollyon, literally means the destroyer. 
He should probably be identified as one of Satan's chief rulers, authorities, and powers that are mentioned in Ephesians 6, verse 12. How does he primarily attack the Christian? His primary field of battle is against the mind of the Christian, where he seeks to destroy us through fostering thoughts of fear, doubt, confusion, and accusation, especially when we are tempted or when we have stumbled and sinned. Bunyan continues his narration of his dream. The foul fiend appears to be nine feet high, and as he came closer, the more hideous he grew. He had scales like a fish, and they are his pride. He had wings like a dragon and feet like a bear, and out of his belly came fire and smoke. As in dreams, Christian recognized the fiend at once, and he knew his name. It was Apollyon. Terrified, he debated in his mind whether he should go back or to stay firm and stand his ground. But considering that he had no armor on his back, to turn his back to this monster would be to invite sudden possible death. For Satan would have the advantage. So Christian dissolved resolved to stay firm. The vein had now drawn very close. He looked upon Christian with a disdainful countenance, and thus he began to question him. Where have you come from? I've come from the city of destruction, which is the place of all evil. Well, by this I perceive that you're one of my subjects, said Apollyon, for I am the prince of that city, and all that country is mine. Why then are you running away from your prince? I was indeed born in your dominion, admitted Christian, but I've given my allegiance to another who is the king of princes. How can I now with fairness go back on this? You did the same to me, and yet I'm willing to pass it over, replied Apollyon. What I promised was in my infancy, said Christian. Besides, to tell you the truth, I like his service better than yours. Now comes the voice of accusation from the devil, aimed at the heart of Christian, as he recounts to him his recent failures on the journey. You've already been unfaithful to him, exclaimed Apollyon. You fell in the slough of the spawn. You slept and let fall your parchment from your hand. And in all you say and do, you're inwardly desirous of vain glory. Too well I know it, replied Christian. Yet the king whom I serve is merciful and ready to forgive. I am the enemy of this king, said Apollyon. I hate his person. I hate his laws and his people. Moreover, there is no prince who will lightly lose his subjects, and neither will I lose you. Give him the slip and work for me again, and I'll double your wages. I know you wages, you destroying Apollyon. They're not such as a man can live on. They are the wages of death. Then Apollyon broke into a grievous rage. What you say is true. Therefore, prepare yourself to die. Christian responded, Apollyon, beware what you are doing, for I am on the king's highway, the way of holiness. Therefore, take heed of yourself. Then Apollyon blocked the path of Christian by straddling across the highway. He would not let him pass, and he taunted Christian. I am empty of fear in this matter. I swear by my infernal den that you shall go no further. Here will I spill your blood. At this, Apollyon threw a flaming dart directly at Christian's breast. Christian lifted the shield of faith that was in his hand and deflected it. Then the fight was on. Christian drew his sword, but Apollyon swiftly hurled a burst of darts at his Christian on the head and hands and feet. His armor kept Christian from mortal wounds, and he fought furiously for half a day. At times he retreated, but we'd sum up his courage and resist bravely. When Christian was almost exhausted and weakened from his many wounds and the loss of blood, Apollyon recognized an opportunity, and he pressed very close to him. Now they were wrestling, and Christian was thrown to the ground. As a result, his sword flew out of his hand. Apollyon gleefully exclaimed, I'm sure of you now. And as he was moving to inflict a mortal wound, Christian felt a sense of despair creeping over him. But as God would have it, 
At that moment, Christian was unable to stretch out his hand and grip his sword once again, and he cried out to the enemy, Do not rejoice over me, for I shall, though I fall, I shall rise again. At this, he plunged his sword into the dragon. Apollyon withdrew as if he had received a mortal blow. As Christian readied his hand to inflict another stab, Apollyon spread his wings and flew away. Then Christian saw a hand appear, which gave him some leaves from the tree of life that immediately healed his wounds. And after receiving refreshment, he resumed his journey. In Bunyan's allegory, a story that's illustrative of spiritual truth, we get a glimpse of the raging spiritual battle directed against the Christian by Satan and his evil associates. Their goal is destruction of the Christian's effectiveness and testimony. How can the Christian fight and win in this spiritual conflict? Well, it's by taking up the full armor that God provides. It's by looking to Jesus and by employing the sword of the word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. The battle is fierce, but God equips his Christian soldiers with the armor that leads to victory. Christian, suit yourself and fight in the name of Jesus. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insight.